Hey, good Wednesday morning, July 17th. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. We're going to go over the recap of the deratio that went through the Midwest and look at the severe weather reports that really are rivaling some of the most active uh, severe weather months we've seen in really since we've started keeping these kind of records. There's only one other year that's been this active. We're going to talk about all the severe weather, the excessive rain, and the forecast ahead today in this episode of Weather Yield. So share it with a friend, tag a friend, phone a friend, throw it at a friend. I don't know. Whatever you guys do, share it with us and uh, with them, and, and let's get right into it. So we're going to talk about, again, the, the recap of the duration. Um, very cool the next several days. Much cooler than normal. I mean, late week here, temperatures in the mid-50s for lows. Almost early fall-like here, at least across Indiana, uh, getting into late this week. Wet southern half of the belt, dry north for now. Heat continues to really materialize. It's just not showing up. A lot of that has to do with how Enzo is is behaving and evolving. Um, some southern rust potentially surfacing here in some of the crops. Some of the crop disease possibly uh, that might be coming up a little bit. I want to talk about from the southwest flow aloft from the precipitation path. A lot of that coming from tropical storm barrel, uh, post-tropical cyclone barrel. Warmer active into July possibly, question mark. And uh, we'll look at our latest yield outlooks as well. This was radar the other night, um, as we looked at Monday night, as this uh, big Boeing cluster of thunderstorms came through eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, went through Indiana, really went into the most densely um, populated area for, for corn and soybeans here in the, in the United States and wreaked havoc on the area. This is just a brief radar loop here. Multiple tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and a ton of severe weather reports. Um, in fact, in terms of, of significant wind reports, we had 31 of them. You can kind of see where they were, uh, you know, where they where they happened, if you will, across um, right here across East Iowa, and then they came down here through Illinois, and they made their way right into Northwest Indiana, uh, and and actually Southern Wisconsin as well. But this is really the area that took the brunt of 70 plus mile per hour wind gusts, 75 plus mile per hour wind gusts um, through the grain belt Monday night. Uh, so plenty of severe weather reports. Uh, it's certainly no lack thereof. You look at the 2024 uh, to date um, map for severe weather reports. It's, it's remarkable. We track three categories, tornadoes, wind, and hail. Uh, and when you add it all up here, especially the wind that's what's that's what's crazy but you add it all up together there's been 2267 severe weather reports month to date in July in 17 days 16 days actually we've had 2267 severe weather reports of those we've had uh wind gusts 90 of them greater than 75 miles per hour there's a couple things i want you to focus on on this map just real quick in terms of the highest production areas uh, in the grain belt, where, where we're really producing probably, you know, the most crop um, that, they're, that, that we produce in the U.S., that's kind of the high production area highlight. And then you kind of you kind of go a step further here. You can see an epicenter of severe reports here, an epicenter here in South Dakota, and then a big one here in southern Nebraska and portions of Kansas, and then again here in Missouri. A lot of the belt has been hit with severe weather, with hail, um, especially across southern Nebraska. A huge swath of damaging hail went through. Um, so we've just continued to deal with severe weather uh, almost to no end. This is the count through the 16th of July for the annual tornado reports. The only year ranking higher right now, that dashed green line is 2011, where uh, by this time, we had 1,963 tornadoes. Uh, this year to date, we have 1,412. So 2011 is blowing, you know, blows that out of the water. But this is uh, really since um, 2010, this is the second most active severe weather season to date uh, on record. You look at the wind local storm reports, it's also the same thing. We've had 11,333 wind reports since January 1. The only other year to beat that is 2011, sitting at 17,609. Um, in fact, there hasn't been any years really um, super like this year. Uh, maybe in the wind report department, you could look at 2022. 
otherwise, this severe weather has been on an island of its own. We also have the the uh, the issue here of of southern rust. I, I follow a guy you know, on Facebook, and he's actually a client of ours. And I this this information comes from his post. And I actually want to put this in here because I, I'm not an agronomist. You know, I, I don't uh, I, I don't know all this stuff, but I know enough to know what this stuff means. And I'm gonna pull this up over here so you can see uh, what it is that he had to say. And this is my my horrible attempt at getting you that data. It's like sprawled across the screen here. But this was from his Facebook post. Uh, Southern rust is on the Indiana border, uh, border, and barrel likely carried a significant spore load up from the Delta. With the recent heat and moisture, I expect to find it any day. Cooler temperatures in the short term will slow it down, but it will need to be closely monitored for the rest of the season. That's Ben Jacob. He's an agronomist pioneer. And he posted our map here of the seven-day rains. The moisture coming from the south carrying it north uh, is a disease component we need to consider that has be, that is going to be at risk here for being brought up into the grain belt, especially the southern and eastern grain belt. Not only that, that it could continue because of the flow of precipitation source here in week two coming from the south. We'll talk about that in just a second. Rainfall ranks since June 1st. If uh, the lower the number, the wetter it's been since June 1st in western uh, Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, uh, and in through uh, over here through Michigan. And this has been essentially the wettest summer on record for the most part, uh, maybe ranking three or two since 1893. Uh, nonetheless, it's been very, very wet. Just to the east, it's the exact opposite. It's been virtually the driest summer to date on record. Uh, for the eastern uh, mid-Atlantic there, Carolinas, and then out here across northern California, it's the driest on record. Uh, remarkable there, just remarkable. But nonetheless, there's been plenty of moisture here, and uh, there's, no, there's no significant need for moisture right now. Uh, we look here at temperatures. Temperature ranks since June 1st. The uh, lower the number, the hotter it's been. It's been one of the hottest summers uh, top five hot summers for the Northeast, top three hot summers for the desert Southwest and for Florida. Meanwhile, in the grain belt in the Midwest, uh, it's been cooler versus warmer. Um, it hasn't been crazy warm. It's just been kind of an average summer. The heat really failing to materialize. The last 14 days, there's been an excessive amount of rain across southern Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. Uh, there was a lot of very, very heavy rainfall and flooding uh, Monday night, especially across central Illinois, eastern and southern Missouri. 14-day rain numbers exceeding 500% of the normal, and here across southern Michigan as well, exceeding 3 to 400% of the normal. Um, and so that, that focus shift a little bit. But remember in the video I talked uh, two weeks ago that this area would get really, really wet that this area would get wet, maybe wetter than it needs to be, and that's exactly what's happened. So it's good to see at least that prediction pan out. We all know the heat hasn't. That one's been a failed one. I uh, talked about that a couple weeks ago as well. The rainfall percent of normal, though, the 30-day uh, departures continue to note just how wet it was uh, here across the Dakotas, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, southern Michigan. A lot of folks there still have their crop. Uh, that, that's wet and not growing because there's too much moisture. We look at the rainfall the next five days. There'll be a break for a majority of the growing regions with the exception of South Dakota, um, eastern Nebraska, down through uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, and the deep south. The deep south will stay very active. We'll get a break here uh, as it gets really cool, too, because temperatures the next five days are going to run about three to five degrees below the average. As I'd mentioned, temperatures are going to be highs in the mid-70s, lows in the mid-50s for a few days. Now, remarkably cool uh, into the week here. It's going to be pretty nice, if you ask me. Rainfall in the five to ten day period. Ah, it's active to the south. Missouri, Arklatex regions, Tennessee, River, Ohio River Valley to the south. Maybe some system there in the five to ten. Overall, not much rain to speak of here getting into... Um, uh, the, the 5 to 10 day, and then temperatures will start to moderate and get a little bit warmer, especially for the northern third of the grain belt, cooler to the south. So it's kind of that warm over the top, cool to the south uh, idea. 
The week two data, there's no significant signal for any heat unless you're in the, the northeast or the desert southwest. This is actually a probability of normal conditions. So late, if you can imagine what late, uh, late July normal conditions are like, that's what you're going to see. The week two precipitation data indicates, again, what I was talking about with the concern in the southern rust is if temperatures get warmer, uh, which they, they, they'll warm up, they'll moderate, and the, the flow, the precipitation source region continues to come from the south like this, it carries those, those diseases up with it. And so I would just keep in mind here that um, that may become a problem, um, something that people start talking about uh, as we get uh, further into to, uh, July and eventually into to August. Okay, 16 to 30 day outlook. Here's the temperature. We'll lar enlarge that one real quick. Uh, again, you can see uh, the, the warmer temperature pattern to the north expected and the cooler temperature pattern to the south expected. Um, a little bit warmer than the 10 and 30 year average for cooling degree day data, um, but much above normal temperatures should start to arrive across the, uh, the grain belt uh, in the 16 to 30 day. Again, you know, we've talked about this, understand we've said it, um, the signals are still there, you, you can't ignore it. Uh, past performances aren't an indication of future ones when it comes to outlooks, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. This is precipitation in the 16 to 30, that southern flow staying active, much above normal down there in the deep south. The eastern belt possibly getting more rain than the, than the central and the western belt, but if the tropics start to pick back up, which is something we have noted in our summer uh, outlook product for, for several months, if the tropics pick back up, uh, this area here will likely trend drier. And you may be looking at below normal precip further expanding there um, across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley as well later in that period. And I do think that the tropics can, can come back around and, and, and become more active. Okay, so just something to keep in mind there. I mean, here tells the story, soil moisture percentage index, um, you know, it's still very, very wet. This will update uh, Southern Illinois and uh, uh, Missouri. It's, it's been very, very wet. The two-week change with this has brought a lot of that rain into the eastern belt and dried up the central and northern belt. Looking at the August outlook right now, okay, data is kind of over-the-top warm, cooler to the south continue to kind of see this general pattern. Data is also drier. It's, it's drier in the grain belt, wetter in the south. And when we look at our analog data, um, it, it kind of supports this. We've, we've always had a concern of being drier in August in the summer outlook package. Um, with the warmth over the top, if the, the ridge establishes here and the tropics pick back up, a lot of the moisture in here will probably It'll, it'll be less than, uh, than probably normal. It might be drier, might be the idea. It gets very active, though, with the southern U.S. and the tropical moisture flow. If another tropical storm or hurricane develops, the remnants can still come in here, and it would knock out dry departures for sure. The general precip pattern, aside from hurricanes or tropical storms, might be one that's less active and warmer. That's the idea or the possibility right now at the August pattern. So what does the yield say? Well, the latest data, Enzo neutral years, tropical forcing, everything we're looking at, continues to indicate an above trend corn yield. A couple things you have to consider that we that we want to do a little bit more research on. Uh, years like 2011, okay, years that had big severe weather uh, reports, a lot of severe weather occurrences, okay. Um, now, there were other factors there, obviously. We've had a lot of, of weather happen this year. The temperatures have been great, and the moisture's great, all at 100-foot at views. And everyone knows that. But there's, there's, there's been a lot of, of, of weather, flooding, wind, and things that, that uh, hail that are gonna, they're going to make an impact. How much of an impact, we don't know. There's been no, um, you know, prolonged issues of lack of rain or significant heat. So we all know that. So the analog pa package is suggesting a big, healthy crop right now. And I'm not saying that, are, that there isn't one, but there is a, 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 a contributing factor here, a wild card that we need to keep in mind when it comes to 
the, 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 the thought process on what weather is doing to the yields, which is what we do here on Wednesdays. We talk about weather and yields. Uh, we don't factor in other things, but that's the idea right now is that um, the pattern's favorable. It's good. Um, the, the most recent year that, that, that may be comparable is 2020, you know, uh, when you look at the, at least the, the idea of a below, little below trend yield, just below the line if, if you're thinking about weather impacting things. Soybeans still coming in at plus 0.7. Um, 03 is the only year on here where it was pretty low. Here's the thing. If August precip does shut off, you know, then we may have a different, a different outcome here where that may impact the beans more in August than it, obviously than it, the July pattern does for corn. Um, so we've got some things to dissect, um, you know, boots on the ground, sending in photos, tweeting us, emailing us, showing us what you see, what you have, your opinions as, as growers and professionals in the industry, in the industry is highly desired and welcomed. I would love to hear that from you all as well. So that's been a recap. Share it with a friend. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.